Hello everyone, I'm Jackie. Today, I'd like to introduce you to a movie. It's about masked robbers spent a lot of time robbing the bank without taking away a penny. They were only interested in one box because there was a priceless thing inside. At the beginning of the story, the repairman with sunglasses came to the dead corner of the bank lobby and made all cameras disable with a high energy torch. The other three masked fellows shut the door and the show was going to begin. The repairman announced a robbery today and got the situation under control in a minute. A total of 50 bank staff and customers were taken hostage, police surrounded the bank. The robbers put away all the hostages' mobile phones. A bank clerk didn't want to cooperate. The robber took him to the room, then caught and beat him in front of everyone. Now everyone was honest. Even the little boy was scared to give the handheld game out. Bank staff and customers were divided into two groups. The robber told them to take off their clothes, then put on the clothes and masks prepared by the robbers. They were locked in different rooms. That was what they want. After all, the robbers began to dig holes in the warehouse. Frazier and his colleagues arrived at the bank. The police commander was an old acquaintance. He played with Spider-Man. According to his temper, he had been fighting with the robbers for a long time. But Frazier said that in order to protect the hostages, they should first negotiate with the robbers. He and his partner found the robber's car. There was no trace left. Looking at the bank monitoring, they didn't see what the robbers looked like. The robber sent out a hostage with an iron box hanging on it. There was a robber's threat letter inside. The robber asked police before 9 p.m. prepared a helicopter. They wanted to take all the hostage. The two sides were so deadlocked that there was no progress. A few hours later, the robber asked the police for lunch. The police installed a mini microphone in the pizza and sent it in. Frazier wanted to negotiate with the robber, but the other side didn't say any word. And what they were listening to was all kinds of noise, and the languages that they couldn't understand. Frazier caught a repairman on the side of the road. The repairman knew it was Alberian. Because his ex-wife was an Alberian. Every time they fought, he made two sentences. The police found his ex-wife. After she interpreted, they understood the robbers didn't speak at all. It was just a recording of the president's speech. It took a long time to know that they were taken by robbers. It made them angry. The robbers were very smart. It was not just that the hostages wore masks and they couldn't talk, but they were also changed so that they didn't know each other. There was a little brother who didn't want to wear mask. The robbers immediately forcibly abducted him and asked him to know where is the hell. The robbers sat on the money when he was free. It was also true to persuade children not to addict to games. The work of digging a hole in the underground warehouse had never stopped. They were not trying to tunnel away, but it was about digging a toilet. What was going on? On the other side, the bank president knew that after two branches were robbed, the heart immediately began to panic. In this branch, he kept his secret. He immediately found White and offered her a high price to help him get the papers in the box 392 out. White went back to the mayor. The mayor had to listen to her and drive her to the scene. The mayor asked Frazier to approve White's participation in the investigation. Frazier had always rejected such power. White threatened immediately, she heard that Frazier was investigating a case, there was a $140,000 check gone. Although it had nothing to Frazier, he couldn't get rid of the suspicion. If he didn't cooperate, the mayor would make him miserable. He also couldn't even his job. Frazier had no choice but to allow White to participate in the investigation. At this time, the robber leader had already opened the 392 box. Took out the papers from the box. A few bags of diamonds should be put aside. Sooner or later they would be theirs. Under Frazier's guidance, White entered the bank to negotiate with the robbers. If the robber leader surrendered, he would be in prison in three or four at the most. But he would get two million dollars right after out of prison. It was a good deal, but the robber leader said sarcastically during World War II, an American used his relationship with NC, regardless of the people's life and death, he made a lot of money. Later, he opened a bank with that amount of money, and collected both fame and wealth. He started to do all kinds of charity to wash himself and make atonement for himself. But black is always black, no matter how much attempt you try to wash. And that man was the president of the bank. White was dumbfounded. The robber leader also said that he would take the secret document. He walked out of the main entrance. All lies and crimes would come to light. The robbers were already taken the initiative, and White had to leave here. Shortly after the standoff, Frazier called the robber leader and said, the plane was ready, but he needed to see the security of hostages first. In the process, the robber also kindly invited him to have gum. It was not like a robber at all. The hostages were safe and there were no casualties so far. Frazier understood. He think the robbers were just stalling. Where did the robbers abscond with 50 hostages? During the conversation, Frazier suddenly hugged the robber leader, rolled down the ladder, but he still couldn't see the true face of the robber. Frazier told the commander that he believed the robbers didn't want to hurt anyone at all. It was a waste of time. There must be another purpose. As soon as the voice dropped, Frazier got a call from the robber leader. From the camera, the angry robber leader killed a hostage. Frazier was so angry that he ran to the door and asked the robber. What were they doing? The robber said that Frazier was too smart to be a policeman. Frazier lost his command. It was really a pain. The commander began to plan the fight in case of a firefight between the police and the robbers. Hostages were bound to suffer heavy casualties. The only way was to leave the robbers alone. 
so the police had a chance to break them down. With the dense artillery, the robbers took a big risk. One of the inspectors suggested that they could use rubber bullets, knocked people out of the bank and arrested them. It was a good idea, but it couldn't guarantee the absolute safety of the hostages. Frazier looked at the iron box sent by the robbers and found it by accident, there was a monitor inside. No wonder the police were always led by the robbers. He immediately told the commander to stop the fighting, but it was too late. The robber leader was ready for battle, released a lot of smoke bombs and got all the hostages together. Everyone fled in a hive, and the police broke the bank gate. All people were dressed the same clothes. It was hard to know who was the hostage and who was the robber. After police broke into the bank, they couldn't find a robber. One of the money in the vault was lost. The robber's gun was also a toy gun, and the hostage was not killed. It was just a blood bag. Even the clothes of the hostages were all packed in three bags. The police arrested everyone. Frazier never gave up the investigation. But for a while, they couldn't find out who was the robber. Meanwhile, the boss suddenly asked him to close the case immediately and not to investigate again. Why? The president must be putting pressure on the police. The robber had the governor in his hand. Once the robbers were found out, the president was doomed. But Frazier didn't give up. His investigation revealed that there was number 392 box in the bank, there had never any business contact. There must be something fishy in it and the owner of the box was the president. Then, Frazier found White, played the tape of her and the mayor threatening him in the car. After White was caught, she had to be obedient, she promised him to talk to the mayor and gave Frazier a promotion. White reported to the president, the secret document was already taken by the robber leader. The robbers also took his diamonds and threatened him at any time. And White knew what the president was up to. If there was a need in the future, she would take advantage of it. Was it irritating? After the robber leader was taken away by the police, would he expose himself? In fact, the robber leader never left the bank. He had been hiding in the partition of the bank's underground warehouse. He ate and drank there for a whole week. Before playing with police, it was for invisible partitions and latrines. After the robbery was over, the robber leader brought the diamond, came out swaggering. When he left, he immediately bumped into Frazier, who came to the bank to investigate again. This gang of robbers was like this stole a box of diamonds from the president. The robber leader left Frazier a diamond ring on purpose. He believed that Frazier would found out the scandal of the president from the diamond ring. Frazier opened the 392 box. There was a huge diamond ring in it. The origin of the diamond ring was the iron evidence that the president helped NC. Frazier and his colleagues found the president, showed the evidence of diamond ring crime, stabbed the governor's handle. The president immediately felt guilty. At the end of the movie, Frazier found the mayor and White, gave White the previous recorded evidence and the investigation bureau call, and gave them this opportunity to make contributions as a favor. Let them investigate the president of the bank. Frazier was also the winner. Not only with the help of the mayor, he became a senior detective. And the robber leader also sent him a broken diamond as a thank you. This movie is called Inside Man. Finally, who is the inside man? The president of the bank, Mayor, White. They're in high places, rich and powerful, they control the fate of many small people. But once they're caught, they're immediately terrified. Instead, they would become a fool to small people. It's also the achievement that the robbers have their own way of stealing. If you like Jackie, please subscribe, and see you next time.